Hello friends, Kendra here. Let's just get comfortable, why don't we? Um, I am here with my January wrap up. A little bit late, but better late than never, I guess. So I thought I would talk about three books that I didn't really enjoy and for all of her actually pretty similar reasons. Um, so the first books that I want to cover here are um, I read the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix and then I read um, Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marina Garcia and um, The Survivors by Jane Harper. Um, all three of these books I read because I was so fascinated with their premise or I really loved the author. And so for the Southern um, Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, I was like, I love Southern Lit. I love slaying vampires. I love like moms in suburbia doing things. It's set in the 90s. Let's go. But what I found it to be was very slow, very, very slow. And then it kind of started getting into this weird white savior territory at the end and I was like this is this isn't this is what is happening and so it kind of ended up feeling like the help was set in the 90s with suburban mom white moms to be specific and um, vampires sort of so I was really disappointed in the book and the more I think about it the more disappointed I am so I, I don't really want to give it any more airtime I don't want to waste any spoons or time um, discussing that one. Um, also, I didn't enjoy Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia, and I know that this is like a very uh, split book. A lot of people loved it, a lot of people didn't. So I want to say, preface this by saying, if you want to read it, go read it. Don't let my review stop you. A lot of people have loved it. Probably more people have loved it than disliked it, but I, I also thought it was slow. I love the premise of this whole like, you know, gothic manor, satin, you know, Mexico, and all this stuff going on, right? And I love the themes, and I love what the author was trying to do, but I did feel like it was just super slow, and there wasn't enough really to keep my attention, and I love slow books, so I feel like if I'm noticing that it's slow, like, it's especially a problem, but I also have this pet peeve. Right, so we had all of these women in traditional like gothic stories, the mad woman in the attic, or the woman who like faints, or like Cassandra who dies because her chastity was ruined, and like all this, right? It's ridiculous the way that you have tied in the sexism with the ableism and whatever. I hate, I hate stories like that. But then you had another round of non-disabled people writing retellings of like, these uh, women who are in the circumstances to try to turn them on their head and write a more feminist version. It was the patriarchy that drove her mad and why she was in the attic, etc, etc. And I felt like th that's also problematic for different reasons because when you have non-disabled people writing about disabled characters, it gets weird. But you also have like a lot of other things going on that they're not acknowledging. So I appreciated that this, you know, Mexican Gothic tackled a lot of books around racism and white supremacy and eugenics and like all of these different things, but I felt like when it was looking at this Gothic, like, um, trope or tradition or whatever of having a woman who might be losing her mind or who might be ill, she failed to turn it on its head in regards to the ableism that was part of that tradition. She turned everything else on its head to make certain points about different things, but I feel like she failed in the disability area. But um, feel free to read, have your own opinions, etc. It's great. Uh, they're Survivors by Jane Harper. I, I really love Jane Harper's characters. Like that is why I'm here for this these stories. I'm not here for the plot or the twists or whatever. I don't feel like that's where Jane Harper shines. I feel like Jane Harper shines with her characters. So in this book, it's very slow. First person to show up uh, dead in, in the contemporary timeline or whatever, because we have flashbacks, of course. So in the contemporary timeline, someone it dies like 25% in. That's way too long. That's like way too long. And so it just ruined the kind of pace of the whole novel. I just didn't work and I figured out who it was because she threw out obvious red herrings for like every single other person and then I'm like well they must be the murderer then and of course they were but I was like then what is the motivations and I wasn't really like impressed with the motivations that she came up with so anyway this wasn't my favorite I love The Lost Man I love Jane Harper I would recommend starting with The Dry or 
The Lost Man, but like I just was not a fan of the survivors, which makes me really sad because typically I really love Jane Harper. So here we are. Um, all right, so those are the books that I thought were <laughs> less than enjoyable. Um, next we have books that I enjoyed um, and look forward to reading more from them. So next is a mystery. This is Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder, T.A. Wilberg, a woman from South Africa, etc. She writes about this alternative 1950s London where there's a private detective agency, someone gets murdered in there, it's like a locked room kind of mystery, and so our protagonist has to go and solve the mystery to keep her job at the private detective agency and to save the agency and all of this stuff, right? Okay. So what's great about this, though, is the world building and what the author does with that. I felt like this book also was a little bit slow, but there's a lot of world building, like I said. So I feel like the second book, after all of this is like put, you know, in place, will be much more enjoyable because there's a lot less work of world building that she'll have to do because there's a lot of, you know, spy stuff in here that I really enjoyed. And so if you're looking for just a mystery to listen to, um, you know, while you clean your house or walk your dog or whatever, that's just fun and enjoyable. I personally listen to books like these right before I go to sleep for whatever reason. <laughs> Um, then this would be a great pick for you. Um, my favorite web comic is Sloth Hilda, and so the second book of Sloth Hilda comics is I Love You More Than My Phone. This is about a sloth with a corgi, and it's adorable. I mean, that's really the summary, right? I love Sloth Hilda so much, and the author, Dante Fabiero, messaged me and was like, hey, can I send you this book? Um, I was like, yes, of course. I love Sloth Hilda. <laughs> so I always take a photo of the, of the book with Dylan. It's cute. That's a summary. <laughs> um, so another book um, that I read, and you know, I, I, I find this book fascinating because this is You Exist Too Much by Zaina Arafat. And this book is a almost like a character study of our protagonist. She has just broken up with her girlfriend when her girlfriend finds that she has been having this like um, romantic only kind of liaison with a professor and, and really has just been frustrated with her partner and the lack of romantic focus that she has. Um, they both met at an eating disorder uh, support group and so there's a lot going on with this protagonist. Uh, she's Palestinian American and so we have a lot of flashbacks to her childhood, to she and her girlfriend's early relationship, but we also have the present storyline which is where she's going to get treatment for love addiction at this one treatment, like a live-in treatment center. And it really looks at this character, and I felt more than a novel, this is a character study almost, because there's no really discernible plot. It's a purely character-driven story, which is great. I love those. But I feel like if you don't mesh with the character, you're not going to enjoy this book. I really enjoyed, uh, once I figured out that this is not a really a likable protagonist at all, and that's fine. I just was so confused, like, going into the book, I didn't know what to expect. And once it clicked, I was like, oh, okay, now I see what the book is doing and what it's trying to do. Then I started really enjoying the book. It's very slow, very intense. Uh, it can be often difficult to read just because of the content and how emotionally fraught that it is. But overall, I really enjoyed the book. Um, the cover's gorgeous. Nicole Caputo is one of my favorite cover designers of all time. I love her. And uh, this book is from Catapult. And I bought this... I think this was one of my doctor visit books, I think. Every time I have a doctor's visit, I unwrap a book that I bought for that specific reason. Um, and they're kind of like blind dates that I have previously picked out for myself and forgotten what I have chosen. So I think that's what this was. Anyway, I look forward to reading more from this author. But yeah, but if you don't like character driven stories, I'm not sure this is a book for you. It depends. Um, so the last two I enjoyed very much, and I guess I did this in the order of least enjoyed to most enjoyed, accidentally, but um, next up is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I want to give a specific shout out to the audiobook, which is narrated by Alaska Jackson. That's the only audiobook that Alaska Jackson has narrated, and I'm devastated because I love her now. I'm just obsessed. Uh, but this book is about Liz Lighty. She uh, is a black girl living in 
small town Indiana. She's a senior and she has just found out that she lost this big scholarship that she needs to go to college. And now she doesn't know really what to do until she f sees that there's a 10K scholarship for the winner of this prom queen competition that her high school holds every year, where a bunch of rich parents, like, you know, provide the prize money for this and whatever. So uh, she enters the competition, even though she hates everything to do with prom, and uh, it gets complicated because there's a girl that's in the competition that she starts getting a crush on. But she's not really out to the rest of school. She's only out to her like family and close friends and stuff. So like, what's that going to be like? It's adorable. I loved it. Um, I will link an episode where Sachi and I discuss it. Uh, we just, it's great. I cannot wait to read Leah Johnson's next book. So the book that I loved the most from this month is the first book that I read for this month, and that is We Write Upon Six by Quan Berry. I saw, I think I saw Lala talking about it, and I was like, oh wait, I remember. I think I have a copy of this book. So I went to my closet, and Pantheon sent this to me. Thank you so much, Pantheon. And I uh, apparently got a copy of this back in the summer, and Liberty Hardy had recommended it to me. It's about this... Uh, girls field hockey team in New England around the area of Salem, which has then been broken up into different townships and whatever. So um, this book is about them, how they make a pact basically like with the devil to win their season. Um, this is full of a lot of humor, a lot of like gross things happen, so just as a heads up, but it's hilarious. I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, Quam Berry is Afro-Vietnamese, and so she talks about being black and being Asian and what that looks like for her as being adopted, you know, by white parents. And she uses those things to uh, these different characters on the team and their experience with race in a very white New England school. And so I really appreciated the way that she handled that so deftly and the way that uh, there was such a, a depth to this book, but it's also incredibly funny and incredibly weird in all the best ways. I really love this book, so I thought it was a delightful way to start off the year. Sadly, the rest of January was kind of hit or miss, but there's always February. So yeah, so th this is the my favorite book of the month. So that was a very hit or miss month. Um, you know, there's just so much going on in January of me trying to get everything together to start the new season and of reading women and all this stuff. So it was a bit much, but um, I'm very excited for what February has to offer. And I will say it does get better, so that's nice. But um, yeah. All right. Well, that's it. That's it for this month's reading. I will see you in the next video, but until then, I guess I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye friends.